Well, hey, 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 pedal people, it's Pedal Guy here. How you doing? Today, what we're gonna do is we're going to set up our Headrush pedal board with Pro Tools first, and we're gonna get started right now. Well, hey, it's Scott at the Pedal Guy here. How you doing? I hope you're having a great week, and I hope you're gonna have a great weekend. Now, before we get started, if this is your first visit to our channel, make sure you take a second and click on that subscribe button down there and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. And if you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow us so you can stay up to date with all of our activities because we do post daily and we'd love to hear from you. So in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Head Rush pedal board with Pro Tools first. And the reason I'm doing this is because you can only look at the pedal board for so long before you start getting the itch to start recording what you're doing into some sort of medium. And Pro Tools First is a good way to do it. And the best thing about it, of course, is that Pro Tools First is free. You can download it from Avid's website, and I will leave a link in the video description so that you can go get it for yourself. Now, the thing to note, though, is that while it is free, it's extremely limited. So it can only do just certain things. Uh, so eventually, you're gonna wanna upgrade, and the good thing is, the good news about that is that Avid has a couple of upgrade paths for you. So it's not that hard to, to get to the full-blown version if you want to. But the idea here is just to give you a taste of what the application can do. But if you're just starting in recording, it's a perfectly fine way to start. Uh, you can't get better than free, am I right? So anyway, uh, it's very easy to set up and I'm gonna take you through the process and we're gonna get going right now. Okay, at this point, we've got our guitar plugged in, our groovy pink guitar. Got my headphones on, I got my Headrush pedal board turned on and ready to go. Uh, I've also got Pro Tools loaded up on my system. Now, one thing I didn't note before we got into it is make sure that you download and install the latest version of the audio driver from the Headrush pedal board website. Now, if you're using Windows, you have to do this. If you're on a Mac, it should run natively and you shouldn't have to do this. But uh, in any case, uh, if you're on Windows, just make sure you do that. Otherwise, you'll be pulling your hair out of your head trying to figure out how this all works because that is an essential part of making the whole system work. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and switch screens. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to set up the Headrush pedal board to be used as an audio interface. And the way we do that is we go to the upper right corner to the three dots, go to that drop down menu, select global settings, and you can see now in the upper right corner, we have our audio settings here, where we have our selections between the different sampling rates and whether USB audio is turned off or on. Currently, it's set to off. So we wanna go ahead and turn it on. It takes a second to connect to USB audio, okay? And now it is set up to be a USB audio interface. You can also see that it is offline at the moment and it's red, but don't worry, that's gonna change in just a second. What we now need to do is go over to our uh, Pro Tools session here and go to Setup, Go to the playback engine and we will now select the Headrush pedal board ASIO. And once that's done, go ahead and click OK. And now what's gonna happen is it's now set up to be used as an audio interface. It's now saying streaming, so we're all good to go. If it's green, that means you're good, okay? So now we're gonna go to file and we're gonna go open recent. This is a little session I set up prior to going forward so that we could do this quickly and easily. Uh, let's also revisit the setup real quick. Go to uh, Playback Engine. and uh, Actually, what I meant to do, sorry, go to uh, Hardware. And this brings up the Headrush Pedal Board control panel. Now, this is where you set up your buffer size. Now, the buffer size, and this is really important, is this is what determines what's called latency. And that's the delay between playing a note and hearing a note. Uh, now, it's the, the, it's, to be more specific, it's the delay between playing the note having it go through your computer and then coming back out and you can hear that note play back. So what you want to do ideally is keep that buffer setting to a low value so that it will decrease the amount of latency. Now here's the rub though. Not every computer is built the same way. Not every computer is built to do this the same way. So what can happen is if you go too low on your buffer settings, you're gonna start getting clicks and pops when you record and play back and you don't want that because you're gonna record that into your uh, into your recordings and you absolutely don't want that. So you have to do a little bit of experimentation. I found that 128 works well for my system here, but you might find that a lower setting works better for your system if you're working with a really fast PC. Okay, but not, neither here nor there. Uh, one other thing too is we're going to start in our USB mode here in the head rush. We're gonna start with live mode and I'll show you why in just a second. But anyway, let's get back to Pro Tools here. Uh, okay, at this point now we can go ahead and close that and we wanna go ahead and create 
a, an audio track. So let's go to track, new, and we want it to be a stereo track because this is a stereo product. So why wouldn't we want to record a stereo track, right? Um, and after that's done, just keep it on audio trap, uh, track, uh, keep it on ticks, and go ahead and hit create. And now let's turn up the guitar. <laughs> Oh no, we're not hearing anything through the computer yet. Well, that's because we need to go over here to our track where we can select between arming the track for recording uh, or we can uh, use what's called input monitoring. Uh, we can also solo and we can mute, but we want to go ahead and do input monitoring. Okay, so very simple, right? But you hear that note? You hear, you hear that delay? You hear that delay? That's that latency I was talking about, okay? So if I go back up here and start playing a note and turn the input record, the input monitoring on and off. Okay, you get the point? So ideally, you want that uh, value to be low so that you don't get too much latency. Now, realistically, anything between 2 to 10 milliseconds is fine. Um, and it, as, it is being recorded in tempo. It's just not play, It's being recorded as you're playing it. It's just not playing it back uh, simultaneously if you're getting a little bit of a delay between that. So, but still, when you're monitoring, anything between 2 to 10 milliseconds should be fine. All right, so at this point, if we wanted to uh, go to uh, arm the track and record it, another thing we can also do is we can change the size of the track. So I can go to jumbo size here. And I can arm it for recording. And let's make sure we're all the way back at the beginning. Um, you can see that we have our we have our signal. We have a nice strong signal, and we can start recording. But before we do that, what I also want to show you is something you can do on the Headrush pedal board to get rid of that latency altogether. And that is to switch from live mode to DAW mode. Now, when you're in live mode on the Headrush pedal board, you're hearing what's natively coming back through the Headrush, and also what's coming back from the computer. In DAW mode, you're just simply hearing what's coming from the DAW. Now that's the latency signal you're hearing coming back, but at least you're not hearing any slapback, right? And at this point, if you want to start recording, just hit the record button uh, in the transport control there and go ahead and hit play. Go ahead and hit stop. And look at that. You've got a really strong recording. Now, I've been doing this for well over two decades. I've been in high tech for well over two decades. And I can tell you, it has never been easier to do this stuff. So the fact that we got it going in less than 10 minutes is pretty amazing. Uh, we can also change the size of that. Again, let's go to large here. Uh, so if we play that back, Isn't that amazing? It's really simple. That's the best thing about this. And it's clean, but it's also really loud, so you're not gonna have to do anything else. But here, hang on one second. I'm gonna throw one more at you here. What if you wanted to have a dry track, a dry take of this, as well as a processed take of this? <laughs> All right, let's go to, uh, we're gonna re-record this, so let's go ahead and let's kill that and uh, that track and let's now Create a new track. We're going to go to the track pull down menu, hit new. We're going to go to stereo, create audio two. And we're also going to change the size to large so we have both of them at the same time. Now, uh, you may not know this or you may know this. I'm not sure. But the head rush will not only send out a processed stereo, stereo signal, it will also send out an unprocessed stereo signal so that you can record both tracks simultaneously in your computer. And then you can use the processed track or you can work with a dry track and start using the plugins inside of your DAW to then unleash, unleash the power of the DAW if you want. Um, and it's very simple to do. Uh, you simply go to your IO settings here uh, on your track and Pro Tools. And right now, track one is set to uh, input one and two. And track two is set to inputs three and four. Literally, it's already done.
Okay, so if I turn on the input monitor now for the second track, dry as a bone, unprocessed. Uh, so if I go ahead and arm both of the tracks, I can turn off that input monitoring, don't need that anymore. And go ahead and record. Hit stop. Now let's go back and play those. Make sure we turn off both tracks for don't accidentally start recording again. If I solo the first track, if I solo the second track, and that's literally all there is to it. It, it can't get any easier than that. that. That is how you can record two separate tracks of the same signal at, at the same exact time, one processed, one unprocessed, and then you can unleash the power of the DAW on that unprocessed track and start using all sorts of different uh, weird plugins to really uh, spice it up if you want to. Um, so that's kind of a neat trick that you will see that, and I just wanted to put, you will see that in other videos, but I just kind of wanted to put my spin on it there. But in any case, that is all you need to do in order to start recording inside of Pro Tools. Um, now, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, we, can, we can certainly do that. Just let us know in the comment section below and we'll do that. Uh, make sure, of course, that you're always saving your sessions as well. Uh, and uh, that is that. So that concludes our video tutorial on how to set up your Headrush pedal board with Pro Tools first. In future tutorials, I'll show you how to set it up with Ableton Live and how to set it up with Reaper as well because those are other well thought of DAWs. If there's a DAW that you'd like to see us set it up with, just let us know in the comment section below and I'll try to accommodate. But for more information on the Headrush pedal board and the other products that we carry, please visit us at thepedalguide.com. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks and have a great day.